And speaking of songs, for those that uh, can remember back into the 70s, uh, as Jim Stafford said, I don't like spiders and snakes. <laughs> We're not going to talk snakes, but we are going to talk spiders. A new venomous spider has officially made New Zealand home. The noble false widow spider is one of the world's most invasive arachnids. It was first seen last year in Porirua and then has since been spotted in Christchurch, Nelson, Waikato and Northland likes to travel. Uh, while bites are rare, infections from said bites don't always respond well to treatment. Researchers say it appears to be thriving in urban environments, particularly around gardens and outdoor furniture, and is most often found under pot plants, tarpaulin, and in fence crevices. Note to self, stay away from pot plants, tarpaulin, and fence crevices. Male spiders may be seen out at night, <laughs> the male species always is, um, on exterior walls or just hanging on the ground. Just chilling. Massey University evolutionary ecologist Stephen Truick says it's not an aggressive spider, but will bite in defence. And he joins me now. Stephen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, now, you may have picked up on it. I'm not a fan, um, even of a tiny spider. I, I tend to get quite scared. But um, this particular spider has been spotted in the North and South Islands. So is it fair? It has been here a little while. So so why the fuss now? Well, that, that, that's a good point. Uh, the, the fuss is that we've just noticed that it's here. And uh. the question is, how long has it been here? So there are a couple of other species that are similar uh, that are also uh, invasives in New Zealand. They've arrived and they've colonized and, and spread. Yep. Like a lot of things in New Zealand that are colonized and, and spread. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, this species has, has come to prominence because um, almost by accident, uh, through a popular uh, um, citizen science uh, portal, the iNaturalist site, um, a, a novice had, had made some observation, s suspected it was a, a different uh, species from one that was known before. Bit of debate on, on, the, uh, on the platform, or the other platform. And, <laughs> um, and then finally, identification that, yes, this, this is a species that hasn't been recorded before. So that's important for New Zealand. It's good uh, to know what's yeah. going on out there and what's changing. The next question is, how, how did it start? Where does it come from? You know, yeah, what's going you, to be the outcome? Do you know its original home? Like what country it would have originated from? This species, quite interesting, this species is from the Canary Islands and Madeira. So that's oh. uh, up in the Northern Hemisphere, um, south of Europe, down the side toward, of uh, North Africa. Um, and associated oh. with relatively uh, warm climate there. But yes. it is already uh, well recognized throughout Europe, uh, right up most of the way through Britain now. So that's going to quite high uh, latitudes. Um, and it's an invasive. So it's, it's been successful in spreading uh, there. And also okay. it's turned up in, in California, in the States, and most recently in Chile. South America <laughs> loves to travel. Um, yeah, no. So this, so this little blighter seems to be quite adaptable then, because I mean, look, I know absolutely nothing about the life cycle or what spiders like, but I mean, obviously, I mean, do they like some like the heat? Can they live in the cold? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're right. And uh, in fact, there was a, a very spe specialized study done uh, by some German colleagues a few years ago where they. Uh, used some climate data sampled from around where this species had been found at that stage and then they mm. predicted where it could be found in future and lo and behold in New Zealand lights up down there in the southern hemisphere as, 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 as a hospitable environment and so he the author of that paper was absolutely chuffed when we found, <laughs> when we found it because he said oh I was right you know <laughs> So, I'm glad um, he's chuffed. Yeah, yeah, he's chuffed. Yeah, but not the rest of us. That's yeah, right. not us. You say, you say, Stephen, that that this um, it's not aggressive, but you know, obviously, if it's if you accidentally lean on it or it could bite someone, if you were bit, would the person need to see the doctor? Because you have said uh, we may not respond well to treatment. 
So th there's a sort of the best case scenario and the worst case scenario. So in most most situations, I think what's going to happen is if you are fertiling around out in your backyard and you get bitten, you probably won't know. And that's pro probably going to be the case with most spiders because they are still quite small spiders. Their ability to puncture your skin uh, is limited. Um, yeah. But they do have some toxins like the uh, like the uh, similar to the the, um, the the true widow spiders in Australia. Uh, so they the similar kinds of toxins. So they can then result in a bit of discomfort. Um, but I think most people would probably not really be aware of it and wouldn't connect the it bite that. Yeah. With, with the pain. Um, mm. And most people will deal with it, it will just go away and uh, it won't be an issue. But we do know from the studies in, in Europe that in some circumstances those bites can develop into some necrotizing uh, infections because of bacteria that are transferred into the wound. Yes. And so that's when things can get tricky. Oh, you wouldn't be rushing off and bothering a doctor until you were starting to get some symptoms of infection. Yeah, yes. Um, but it's something that from the doctor's point of view, we start, we need to be aware of that possibility. Did I, did I read though, Stephen, with this particular um, um, spider, uh, which is quite interesting and concerning, I suppose, it carries a mixture of bacteria, doesn't it? But some of it's antibiotic resistant? Well, certainly the study in, in Europe found when they screened the bacteria associated with the bitey parts of, of some of these spiders, um, mm. that definitely they had a big range of bacteria associated with them. And some of the strains of bacteria were resistant to many of the popular antibiotics. Well, that tells us, I mean, that's very, <laughs> from an evolutionary ecologist's point of view, that's very interesting because that yeah. means uh, several things. It, it reminds us about antibiotic resistance that evolved because of misuse of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And it tells us that there can be a connection between, in that case, where antibiotics are used and the bacteria and, and animals living in the wild that can mm -hmm. then come back literally to bite us um, because then we, it joins the loop and we get those bacteria put back into us. Yes. Um, so that is a, a, a symptom of our wholesale or uh, very extensive modification of the environment and climate that, and, is, uh, that is interesting yeah so so while while the this the widow spider the noble false widow spider like you said we might not even notice it if, it, if we got bit mm. do they pose a threat to our native spiders or other spiders Again, that's a very good point, and it's one uh, thing that's been looked at a bit overseas, uh, mm. and there are certainly uh, anecdotes of this species of spider eating native prey. Um, mm. I think in New Zealand what we have to keep in mind is that species like this that are really successful as invasives are successful because they've, they like the environment around people. So they really like urban environments and they're probably not going to do very well in high quality native habitat. Uh, right. So out in the bush. Yeah. Um, of course, if we did start seeing these species, you know, this invasive species moving into the natural environment, we, it would be a, a, an even bigger concern. Yes. Um, but we we sort of create habitat that <laughs> around ourselves. To, yeah, and, and they're happy to be right. there. Yeah. Mm. What is um? Do we have? I mean, how many native spiders do we have in New Zealand? I ah, uh, you, no, you're going to catch me out there. We have a oh. lot of native uh, endemic species of spiders. We've got and we've also got a, a species of spider of this same genus that are considered to be endemic, so just to be found in New Zealand. And uh -huh. an obvious uh, spider that many people will know of is the catapo that yes. you know, lives under wood and driftwood on the beach. Yeah. Um, and that's in a, a related genus. It's not far distant. It's, it's one of the um, true widow spiders. Mm. Um, and that's an endemic in New Zealand species. And um, sometimes uh, mistakes are made in, in, in identification. But our spiders seem to much prefer to be in the native habitat of New Zealand, yeah. which yeah. Uh, is not surprising. Is that's good. where they've evolved. You know. <laughs> And maybe we, that's a good thing. Maybe that means yes, no, that's a good thing. Keep separate. Do we do we know by we I mean you? Do we know <laughs> do we know <laughs> much about spiders? Meaning, 
and I thought about this when I knew I was going to talk to you. Have we studied if they? I mean, are, are they intelligent creatures? Because I look at, I look at their, you know, their web when they're building webs. They're just incredible creatures, and you know, we've studied the how clever octopus are and mm, and other mm. creatures, and we're like, you'd be surprised how clever this is. Do we even look into that kind of thing with spiders? Uh, 